Hello traders, it's Friday, March the 31st, the last trading day of this month. This is John Kicklider, Chief Strategist for DailyFX.com. Here to give you your market wrap-up for this past 24 hours of trade, and of course, the outlook for the final trading session of this week and month. Uh, looking at some of the more active areas of the market, we are once again seeing a shift away from the more potent themes. Uh, most potent, of course, is going to be risk trends, always going to be the case. That was settling with the U.S. equity in indexes rising, uh, the European equity indexes, the DAX and the FTSE, uh, holding steady or advancing, and volatility measures uh, sunk after their very early hope of a little bit more activity through the start of the trading week. Of course, uh, there is always the possibility and increasing likelihood that something does uh, explode in the markets. Uh, there is plenty of fodder to achieve such a thing, and of course the conditions uh, that are behind these markets are more than capable of leveraging uh, problems, including the excessive use of leverage, which isn't just necessarily a notional factor like we as FX traders uh, know it, but also the leverage of exposure uh, in riskier and riskier assets, as well as the leverage that we put behind value that strays further from fundamental value. So there is a lot of exposure, there's a lot of potential, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it has to happen. We can sit in a uh, and a, a pool of gasoline for a very long time without it being a problem is when something strikes the proper match and it uh, ignites then when we're really faced with some problems. So uh, being cautious is certainly warranted, but being proactive and trading against risk is probably not very advisable, uh, nor is trading with a risk on view. It's worthy of note that uh, we've certainly had a string of, Im uh, of impressive uh, indicators this past uh, week, although not all of it consistent. We have highlights like the Consumer Confidence Report on Tuesday, which was an extraordinary increase for the world's largest economy. That is encouraging. The loose suggestion, uh, not this past session, but the, the session before, uh, by a, a, I believe is the Transportation Secretary of the United States, that uh, the Trump administration would uh, release or announce the uh, long-awaited $1 trillion infrastructure uh, spending bill uh, sometime later this year. Uh, something like that also is encouraging, because that's one of the things that has really contributed the most uh, to the performance of the market since the uh, outcome of the November of elections, but we can't hear a lot of the same thing, uh, just a open-ended option or uh, promise without details, timing, and scalability. We're already buoyant uh, on our expectations, and we need the markets to, uh, the markets need a foothold, something to really grab onto to say that, yes, this is the value, and yes, I need to further project uh, strength in the markets from where they're already at. We don't necessarily have that. Will we necessarily have that in the upcoming session? Uh, it could be a struggle. There is a lot of event risk on this docket, uh, but not a lot of it uh, uh, circles back to risk trends, whether on a positive side or a negative side. With a sufficient surprise, some of these can actually achieve such a thing, but I wouldn't put any of them up at the task of readily doing it. Of course, it can always come off docket. Uh, there can be something that is extraordinary that we didn't uh, account for that comes across the wires and spurs a sentiment-based move, uh, but uh, it, it certainly is a lot to expect uh, uh, going into any kind of individual trade. So while we might have some noteworthy technical patterns, I think this week's uh, developments in price are certainly good examples of why we should be a little bit more guarded about uh, just throwing in with a technical move without fundamental backing, like the S&P 500 here, the Spider ETFs break uh, earlier this week, obviously gapping down on Monday. That didn't really lead to any kind of convincing trade or conviction to the downside. Same is true of the dollar yen, another risk-oriented currency pair, which is right back up to that 112 former support, loose support. Uh, now treating it tentatively as new resistance, but that doesn't make it any better as a trade because we still require conviction, whether it's a break back above 112 and finding follow through or using that uh, overhead as a springboard for a, a more aggressive move to the downside. This is for all conditions that are oriented towards restraints. 
keep an eye on the benchmarks, the S&P 500 of the world, the yen crosses of the world, the volatility metrics of the world. Uh, but there are some remarkable performers that uh, perhaps there's something uh, that can be garnered from them. Uh, Dollar Czar, which has been extraordinarily active this week and uh, remarkably active this past session and into the early trade hours of Friday. We had a lot of intraday price action on Thursday, and that was, uh, well, we had event risk. It was the South Africa rate decision in which they did uh, change rates, or didn't change rates, sorry. Uh, their objectives or their forecasts uh, certainly uh, were questionable. But the real uh, catalyst for the RAND was not monetary policy at all. It was political. Uh, shake-up in the cabinet and the ouster of the finance minister, in South Africa clearly had a detrimental impact on the South African rand. Uh, significant rally, as you can see here. Uh, we are now working on the fifth day higher. This also has rendered another extraordinarily uh, extraordinary long-term big picture technical pattern, a wedge after a big bull trend that could have been a significant break if it had more risk conviction behind it. It could have been something more substantial, but as it happens, it's not. Now, it's worthwhile to look at this performance versus a baseline for emerging markets. This is an emerging market currency. This is South African Rand, the US dollar against this is going to be a safe haven. And as you can see, this is the emerging market ETF flipped upside down. So this drop from this particular currency certainly does skew far from this benchmark. Now, run uh, based upon the unique fundamental fingerprint of what's going on in South Africa is certainly possible, uh, but uh, gaps like that seem to be hard to maintain given the consistency of the correlation. Another one that was particularly active, uh, the dollar peso. It uh, looks like that 119 level held, uh, but we didn't find a lot of follow through in this past session, which was remarkable considering that we did have the Bank of Mexico rate decision. In fact, a lot of the uh, outcome here is generally positive. It was a 25 base point rate hike, which is a higher rate of return, uh, but it's also an encouragement. Though it is smaller than the 50 basis point rate hikes that we've had in previous meetings, this seems to reflect optimism, optimism of growth, optimism of trade, optimism in general uh, for the peso and for the financial system in Mexico. That's good. Uh, that also would do more to actually project a continued pace of appreciation. This has been an extraordinarily impressive rate of return from the highs post-election at the beginning of this year uh, down to where we're at now. The peso has clawed back over 15% of its losses from record lows against the dollar. So this is another impressive uh, performance. Uh, this time it's more aligned to the risk on sentiment, although risk on doesn't seem to have this kind of gusto, the kind of influence that suggests that a major trend line break is warming up for strong, strong follow through. Now if sentiment were to drift, and certainly if it were to drift positive, and we had more reason to be optimistic about trade relations uh, between the U.S. and Mexico, then yes, that could carry this even further. But given uh, the Trump administration's uh, consideration uh, that, uh, or uh, suggestion that they're looking into uh, means to penalize those that they deem uh, currency manipulators, uh, I'd be a little bit more concerned about this. All right. I don't think that Mexico can readily be considered a active currency manipulator. They might be attempting to do so because they're uh, intervening on behalf of the uh, FX market, but they're not really successful at it. And you can quite clearly see long term, the peso is really cheap or sorry, uh, uh, extraordinarily cheap because of the dollar's strength. I wouldn't exactly say that this is their doing, but we don't know what the agenda is. We don't know how the me measure of uh, uh, manipulation is being assessed, and maybe it's just active intervention on behalf of the exchange rate. If it's that low of a boundary, then yes, Mexico falls into this category. More likely, it would be tailored towards countries like China, uh, where they are a more active uh, reference for manipulation. But 
I'd be a little bit more cautious here. Now another consideration, although this too doesn't have much in the way of uh, certainty on what's coming in terms of policy change, uh, just loosely saying that uh, they're looking at ways to crack down on manipulation or penalize it, uh, if they think that other countries' currencies are too cheap and they are clearly uh, looking to uh, bolster those currencies versus their own currency, that means they're trying to weaken their own currency. Not through active intervention on their own, but through punishment, punishing their counterparts. But their ultimate objective is to cheapen or lower the currency. Will they be uh, effective at it? It remains to be seen. Uh, it depends on what they do and how committed they are uh, and what the retaliation of such uh, changes would render from other countries. Uh, there are a lot of moving parts here, but the threat should be well taken. And we should be very uh, mindful of what the dollar's movements are. Speaking of the dollar, the dollar's three-day rally has been quite impressive. I mean, this is a three-day rally against uh, some positive economic data, as we've seen, uh, but compared to what we had, let's say, on March the 15th, where there was a rate hike from the Fed. That, that seems like a traditional fundamental lever that would give more performance, but uh, clearly it did not. We are really outperforming here and now. And this is really well known or really well established in the Euro USD. In fact, when we look at the Euro USD uh, for a three day uh, assessment of performance, that three day tumble is the biggest that we've seen this year and the biggest that we've seen since December the 15th. That is a very impressive move and very frustrating for many technical oriented traders that were trying to get an inverse head and shoulders break. Clearly, it is not a good market for finding the conviction necessary to complete major patterns like this. That was extraordinarily, extraordinary impressive gap on Monday to the upside to break the neckline. It was also equally extraordinary that we collapsed after uh, uh, winning that uh, move. Now I'm going to watch the EURUSD very closely. This past session, uh, the U.S. docket had uh, its fair share of Fed speakers, generally hawkish, although Kaplan was interesting because his uh, remarks on monetary policy had a more uh, cautionary tone. I'm watching out for cautionary tones because that is not conducive to growth and uh, positive monetary policy performance, meaning Higher rates are one thing, but the kind of backdrop that would encourage the markets to chase those high, higher yields, thereby the dollar, is another. All right. So, uh, but none of this really had the depth necessary to motivate rate expectations in favor of the U.S. dollar. This is not a big contributor uh, to the dollar's current rally. Uh, what we have in the upcoming session, however, can be, and that's the PCE deflator. Personal income and spending is very important, certainly, uh, but it's the Fed's favorite inflation figure that really is going to stand out on the dollar side. For the euro, this past session we had uh, actually a member, ECB uh, member Knox, who suggested that uh, stimulus should start being wound down, uh, perhaps in January or after, but uh, this discussion of winding down stimulus or quantitative easing is certainly the stage forward which we've been discussing for the ECB making a significant shift from an extreme dove to a more neutral stance. And when we move along this curve, especially from the extremes, the impact is far more substantial in terms of currency movement. That was a consideration. Uh, there was also uh, the German CPI figures this past session, uh, which were a disappointment. Uh, we were already expecting it to step back uh, or ease back, and it uh, dropped more aggressively than expected. That sets a uh, discouraging expectation for the upcoming Eurozone or broader inflation figures. If the ECB is going to hike rates before it ends its quantitative easing program, which is set to end in December, then it needs something to motivate it. All right. Conditions can't just be neutral. They need to be sufficiently motivated through inflation pressures or uh, financial crisis uh, or some degree of, uh, of pressure needs to be put upon the market. Price pressures are the best way of doing it, but also, also if there's a financial crisis that can arise from it, it's obvious uh, from the overly accommodative policy stance that too can achieve uh, that kind of motivation. However, we haven't seen a lot of central banks uh, followed such a course. 
more traditional would be inflation. And we'll see if the uh, CPI figures can achieve something like that. If they can, this has been a big three-day drop. And if the Eurozone CPI figures uh, beat the German figures, then it can be a nice bounce. If not, if it comes out weak and the PCE deflator comes out positive, expect it to be a continuation. This has been one of the most active of the majors, uh, far more so than the Brexit uh, motivated but also curbed uh, cable, the dollar yen, which has been uh, risk oriented and uh, messing around with technical levels that it previously thought we thought we had it broke, uh, the Aussie USD, the dollar CAD, the Kiwi USD, none of these are making the kind of progress that the Euro USD is. Of course, it's progress within a range, but hey, that's just as tradable as a, a breakout with follow through. In fact, the levels are more blatant in a range. Now, more event risk is certainly scheduled for the upcoming session. Uh, as I'm recording this, the Japanese data has come across the wires. Uh, there's also uh, Chinese PMI in the Asia session. We have UK f uh, fourth quarter uh, current account, Canadian GDP. Uh, we have even some Fed speak, although Kashkari, I think we, we know where he stands in his policy views. And two Fed forecasts, or uh, Fed uh, regional GDP forecasts. Uh, lots of data. But I don't think that it's going to be uh, the kind of data, the kind of motivation that's really going to redefine or offer a very substantial range swing, which is generally the, the pace that I'm looking for. Uh, keeping tabs on some of the non-FX set and non-indices set, uh, oil continues to advance. In part, uh, this is uh, supply and demand, but I think that this also has a lot to do with the general pace of the markets. Range is more capable. Uh, this also happens to be taking place at the same time that the dollar is advancing. The dollar is the pricing instrument of oil. Uh, so this is quite an impressive advance. Following not the fundamentals, not the headlines and news, but rather just following what general market conditions say. It's easier to trade a range than it is a major breakout and follow through. And it usually conforms uh, to the higher probability outcomes here. Another one that hasn't made a big break but is starting to slowly turn, gold, uh, also an, uh, an anti-dollar performance. Uh, dollars picking up, finally starting to pull back from that 1260 level. We'll see if this reverses. This also has its uh, uh, depth in anti-currency or non-fiat appeal. So if we think that the finance systems of the world are being flooded with currency, this is where we look. I was keeping a close eye on this just to, to get a better sense of the broader market performance. All right. So keep an eye on the docket over the next 24 hours. The top potential uh, lands with the Euro USD purely from a data perspective. Uh, but be mindful of where volatility can just pop up out of cracks and crevices. Uh, these are markets that look like they're extraordinarily quiet when we look at something like the VIX. Uh, but we know that they can't stay quiet forever. We'll wrap it up here. We'll do our final rundown of these markets uh, tomorrow. Until then, I wish you good luck trading out there.